Hey bakers, on the show today, we're gonna be using the Anchor Shrimp Stand Mixer and we're gonna be making a Pullman bread. This is a pan to me, right? We're gonna be using the special uh, pan to make a square loaf of bread. So, welcome to the Amy Learns to Cook Kitchen. Okay, so what's interesting about this loaf of bread is it's square, like a, a rail car, right? This is called um, a Pullman uh, bread. This is what we call it here in the U.S. You also might uh, see this referred to as sandwich bread, and you might see this referred to as Texas toast. That's kind of what I have called it before. This is based on bread from France called pandemie. I'm not sure if I exactly have the perfect pronunciation of that because, of course, I don't have the accent. But what this is, is this is basically a square piece of bread. So ordinarily, when you make a loaf of bread, it rises up to the level of the pan and then you put it in the oven and you get this oven spring from the heat and the bread crowns above the pan. But there are times that you might want a loaf that's square. One of the reasons uh, these are so great is they fit really well in the toaster. So we're gonna put this cover on here that's gonna keep the bread from going over like this. So it's gonna turn out square like Texas toast. Um, a lot of people like it because it fits perfectly into the toaster right? It toasts perfectly even because it's square. It's also great for stuff like um, club sandwiches. If you're doing a triple decker club sandwich, it's great for that. It's great for French toast. What is great about this is the crust tends to be a little thinner, but the bread, because it doesn't get all that oven rise, it stays down, the bread tends to be a little denser. So when you use it for a sandwich, it holds up very well to a sandwich because sometimes I make bread and it's like this and then the pieces are too big they're too wobbly for bread this makes a nice firm loaf perfect for the toaster and that's what a Pullman is so this is named after the old Pullman rail cars um, Mr. Pullman who invented those luxury uh, dining cars of the old days that people used to love to go on he invented this so it could work really well on a train car because they could stack the loaves. They didn't have this round thing. They could stack the loaves and they could have more loaves in small places in the rail car. So that's why this is called a Pullman loaf, Pullman bread, and it's made in this type. This is a USA pan Pullman. This comes as a set. You get the lid and the pan. And so we're off to the races. So we are going to be doing this in my anchor room stand mixer. And we've done a few videos on the ank. A lot of people love this. Um, it is a unique mixer because instead of having the head over the top where you have the planetary, this mixer actually has the motor at the base. So, your bowl spins at the base. Here's the transmission. So what's great about this mixer is it's open at the top. You can put the uh, ingredients in really easily. And it's a gentle knead because we're going to be using this roller instead of a dough hook. So uh, let me gather, get the ingredients over here, and let's get started on the dough. So this is our egg. And how this works is there's a roller right here. And what's going to happen is we're going to put our ingredients in here. And as the dough develops, the dough is going to be rolling between the roller and the edge of this. So this is the key. This is how the kneading is going to happen. It's almost like this little roller here are your little fingers and you're doing some hand kneading, right? Um, so you're going to be, and this is your workbench, right? This is your 
uh, cutting board and these are your little fingers. So the dough is going to come around here. It's going to look kind of like a donut shape and it's going to need between the edge of this dough and this roller. So that's our goal is to get a donut shape going in here. So all this is going to be facilitated by this right here. This is our dough scraper. So this is going to push the dough around. It's going to go around here. We're going to get our donut and we're going to get our kneading. So we're using a nine cup of flour recipe. We're going to be using bread flour. I'm using King Arthur regular bread flour. Um, that's going to give us about 400 four cups, four and a half cups of flour for each of those Pullman pans. So hopefully we'll have two uh, pans worth. So this is going to be quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead. And turn this on. The ank is a really nice quiet mixer. I'm going to move the roller. This is the arm. And as you move the arm forward, it's going to hit the bowl and it's going to spin because it's hitting the bowl. You can move the arm forward and it's going to spin because it's hitting the dough going through. So right now we're just sort of in stirring mode. So we have our yeast. I'm using instant yeast. We're putting our sugar in there to get that yeast going and happy, right? We're just going to go ahead and stir this around. To get things stirring and moving, you can move this back and forth just to move that ingredients around. I'm going to put some oil in here. This is going to soften our dough. So traditionally, a more crusty loaf is not going to have any fat in it. It's not going to have egg. It's not going to have oil, butter, none of that. That gives you that crispy crunch. As you introduce some kind of fat, the bread starts to get uh, uh, softer. So you can use butter, oil, um, fat. You can use, um, you can use uh, milk, non-fat dry milk or regular milk. We're starting to put in our flour here. Okay, I'm going to put my salt in. So as we move this, all those ingredients are going to be starting to move around the bowl. Okay, so right about now we have what I would call is like a little slurry. Slurry, sorry about all the um, shadows in there, but it's sort of like a little slurry. So look how this looks in here. See how it's going around? Ooh, isn't that nice? So see how it's going, wrapping itself around to the uh, edge of the bowl between the rollers? That's what we want. So we're going to keep adding more flour. you have to move the roller out because it'll start lifting up too high on the edge of the bowl. See how we're getting that donut forming? Donut, donut! <laughs> going to move it a little closer in so we have a little bit more tension I guess you would say 
on that I got some flour through the middle so I'm gonna go ahead and knock that down so it knocks in that flour back into the dough. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing that egg is. It's a little slightly soft. I'm going to put a little tiny bit more flour in there. So bread making is both an art and a science. You can't expect a machine to just do everything for you. Well, maybe a bread machine, right? But you're going to be limited to one tiny loaf of bread. I'm going to move this a little closer to the edge. I'm going to turn that speed up a little bit. It's feeling nice. So it's come together. It is a nice, beautiful ball of dough. Do you see how it's going between the roller and the edge and it's plunking back on here and it's going back around? That's what you want to see. You want to see it a nice gentle knead. It's like your hand up against the board, right? Um, sometimes you got to make some adjustments to get that to happen. Um, you have to you know, it's not just set it and forget it. You have to watch the, consist the consistency of your dough and you gotta make it happen like that. So see how that's around there, going around there, getting kneaded between the roller and the edge of the dough. We're gonna let this go until we have a nice, beautiful dough ball. Okay, so we have a beautiful ball of dough. We're going to set this up for our first rise. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this, the scraper. <laughs> I'm going to take our roller out of here. I'm just going to move this back so I can get our bowl out of here. So the egg comes with this, you can put this lid on here while you're doing your first rise. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in there just to make it, you don't have to, I don't always do that for this, but just to make it a little bit easier to get out of the bowl. Wow. <laughs> we have a beautiful ball of dough. I'm just going to spray it real quick. And I'm going to put it in here, flip it over. Wow, look at that. Beautiful ball of dough. And I'm going to put this on here and we're going to do our first rise. I'm going to let it maybe 45 minutes and let this um, get nice and puffy. So we'll be back. 
So Eric always says he knows does or bread is coming because he can smell when it starts smelling like dough. So this is our dough. Woohoo! Very nice. Look at that. <gasps> We're just gonna give it a little poof, 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 poof. Get that air out of there. Poof, poof, poof. That's a scientific sound. Poof. That looks like a salt to me. <laughs> Woo! Wow. Wow, we have some beautiful dough here. One thing I noticed when you use instant yeast, it kind of has, I don't know if it's a spongy feeling, but it's like a spongy sound to me. <laughs> I don't know why I don't get that with um, active dry. I don't know why. So I'm gonna weigh this real quick, just so I can go half and half. Yeah, I'll switch to kilos. So I have 2,170. 2,170. Grams. 2,180. Okay. 1,080. Okay. How much does he weigh? 1,085. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so here's our dough. So, um, so what I want to do is, I want to flatten out. This is really, the gluten is having a good old time here. I want this to be the size of this pan. I want the dough to be even, and I'm gonna make it kind of wide here. Oh yeah, I do wanna spray the pan a little bit. I don't usually do this, but we have this lid. I don't really want to fight the lid. So there you go. Um, it's looking to be about the size of the pan. So I'm just gonna roll this. Roll and pinch it into a loaf. If it wants to behave. I'm gonna finish the end by just tucking it in and pinching it. Do the tuck and pinch. Pinch, pinch, pinch. You have a beautiful loaf of bread. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our loaf in here. I'm just gonna smash it out a little. Do a little of the smash out. Smash bread? <laughs> smash burgers. <laughs> You could make this into smash burgers. House bread on it. And we're gonna go ahead and take our lid here. We're gonna put this on here. And we're gonna do the next one. Give a little, give a little, little bit. And a little bit in here. Dough, dough meister. Squeeze, squeeze your dough. Make you become one with the dough. Get the, all the air bubbles out. Squeeze them. If your dough is not cooperating, just let it rest for a few minutes and it'll give it up, right? So we're gonna roll and pinch. Roll 
and pinch. We're going to do the roll and pinch. Roll and pinch. That was from a movie, boo. Not quite roll and pinch. Uh, I think it was called bending and picking <laughs> up or something. <laughs> bending and picking up. Yeah. Dough in. Squish in. This is just, I don't know, I guess this is just evening your dough out. You kind of want to make sure you got the same amount of dough on each side of the pan. And here, we're going to let these rise 30, 45 minutes, something like that. Then they will go into the oven. Okay, so it's been about a half hour. Um, the bread has risen to that high. It's going to get some oven spring. So oven spring is going to take it to the top of this pan. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven. We have it at 350, 325 convection. And when they're done, I'll be back. Okay, so I pulled these out of the oven. They don't get quite as brown as they do in a pan, in a pan or just freely to the heat. Um, but I probed it. 199, you want it around 1, 199, 200, um, so you know it's done all the way. Um, one thing I didn't notice when I did spray these, I'm using a olive oil only spray. There's no propellants in that spray, otherwise you'll get a sticky residue. So you want, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so, woo! Look at that. That's a beauty. Wow. So we want to get these out of here fairly quickly or they will sog up. So I have my rack here. I'm going to be very careful because this is very hot. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So see how that's a nice, hot, nice square loaf. Wow, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. It looks like it mostly browned in the areas that did touch metal. Yeah. The corners didn't brown, but everything else did. But I probed it, so it is done. Mm -hmm. It has more like a delicate, lighter crust. Um, I think that was some of the appeal with the Pullman bread is it's not a crusty bread. It's soft for your sandwich. Whoa. Look at that. So that's what the rich people want. Though. Yeah, that's that's what was served to the rich. So there's a little hole right there. I probed it there. So this is what's so great about a Pullman loaf. It's square. It fits perfectly in your oven. I mean your to toaster, and um, it gives you that square-looking Texas toast kind of sandwich. So I will do that as soon as these fully cool off. We'll give them a slice and see how they look. So we'll be back. Okay, so it's time to cut the bread. I have my, some of my favorite, my, this is my Zwillig cutting board, and this is my, this is one of my favorite bread knives. So, here is our loaf. It's fully cooled. Look at it, it's just a square, right? That's a Pullman loaf. That is what's so great about Pullman loaves, is you get that Texas toast kind of, uh, look to it and we have a nice like dense crumb on it very nice put a hold up to a sturdy sandwich it's beautiful right so let's go ahead and cut some slices so if you want slick thick sliced texas toast go ahead and slice them thick if you want regular sandwich slices go for it right whatever you like based on what you're going to make looks great so that my friends is texas toast pullman pan or pan day pan to me right that's what it looks like perfect size for your sandwich or your toaster 
Thanks for joining me.